DeSoto and the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers from coast to coast present Groucho Marx. In You Bet Your Life. And now, here he is, the one, the only... Right. We're playing again with $1,500 for one of our couples. And if any of them say the secret word, the duck will come down and pay him $100. The word tonight is voice, V-O-I-C-E. George, fire away. We have a, a couple of young people, Groucho. Miss uh, Geraldine Tyler and Mr. Brad Andres. So, uh, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Say the secret word, and you'll each get an extra $50... It's a common word. It's a common word, something you always have with you. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Anybody that looks like you, don't delay. Run in. <laughs> Geraldine Tyler and Brad Andrews, huh? Geraldine, that's a rather unusual name. Uh, where does it come from? Well, actually, my father got it back in Minnesota. Your His father's name is, name is Geraldine? No, my father's name is Gerald. Oh, and you're uh, Brad Andres? That's is that right. the way you pronounce it? Andres, yes. Look at those dimples. Can you imagine if a girl had that? Huh? Where were you born, Brad? I was born in Stockton, California. Stockton, man. Eh? Is that in California? That's right. Oh, well, are you, are you married? No, I'm not married. No. You those dimples there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> How about you? Uh, are you married, Jerry? No, I'm not. No. You're a very pretty girl, Jerry. Has anybody ever told you that before? Well, on occasion, I guess. Mm -hmm. Who told you? Well, I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, what was the occasion? <laughs> Under what conditions were you told you were a very pretty girl? Well, was it a quiet moonlight night, an orchestra softly playing in the distance? Well, on different occasions, I guess out on dates. Jerry, why don't you just tell me to mind my own business? <laughs> in that case, the show would be over, I'd get bounced, and on Monday morning, you'd find me in front of the bank with a tin cup in my hand. You wouldn't want that to happen, would you? No. Well, then answer my question. <laughs> Get back to you in a minute. Now, Brad, let's find out a few facts about you. Where were you born? I was born in Stockton, California. Well, what do you do for a living? Anything that we can talk about? <laughs> well, I'm a professional motorcycle racer. Oh. How old are you, Brad? I'm 20 years old. 20. Well, that's a nice age for a motorcycle racer. racer. <laughs> Have you won any major motorcycle races, Brad? Well, I've won my share. Well, uh, that's kind of ambiguous. I mean, do you hold any titles? Well, I hold titles in a number of states, and I'm also Grand National Champion of the United States. You're the Grand National Champion of the United States. Well, yes. congratulations. Thank you. Aren't you pretty young to be the national champ? Well, I'm the youngest national champion in motorcycle history, yes. Well, that's quite an honor. Yes, However, I imagine in motorcycle racing, there's no such thing as an old champion, is there? <laughs> <laughs> I used to drive one years ago, you know, an Indian. Did you? Yeah. We used to have four of them. We used to travel from town to town in motorcycles. Hopper had a Harley Davidson. I forget what Chico had. Uh, Chico had a girl in Topeka, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, what do you think of the champ here? Well, I think his life sounds very exciting and... Yes. Well, Dangerous. I mean, yes. Well, I think is, he's very nice. Yes. Uh, what is your opinion of Jerry, uh, Dimples? <laughs> I think she's uh, beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. I have a hunch the Grand National Champion is getting ready to hook up a sidecar to his motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a job, Jerry? No, I'm a student at the University of Southern California. Well, in addition to the football players, what else are you studying? <laughs> Well, my major is business education, and that includes courses in business and those in education, and I have also courses in finance and accounting. Uh -huh. Would you be interested in riding on the rear end of a motorcycle? <laughs> well, why are you taking a business course? Do you plan to plunge into Wall Street? Well, no, not necessarily. Actually, I don't really plan to go into business. I think that it would probably help me a lot after I get married and budgeting and such. You expect to stick to a budget if you get married? This is unheard of. Obviously, you've never been married. No. Jerry, I'm curious. Say you married a nice young fellow with a fairly good job. He had dimples, and his <laughs> income was around $100 a week. And 
He was a fugitive from Stockton. <laughs> now, how would you budget that? Well, I never really figured out a budget. Did you want me to do it now? Well, if you could do it quickly and, uh, you know, just touch the high spots. Well, to begin with, I guess I'd put about 25% into rent. Into rent. That's $25. Yeah. And about 25% into food. That's 50. And about 10% into miscellaneous expenses. It's like diapers, and, you mean? And, <laughs> That's 60. 5% into doctors and dentist bills. Mm -hmm. and oh, are you living in a dream world? <laughs> and about 15% for clothes, and about 15% for... <laughs> well, he just hopped on his motorcycle and left. Huh? <laughs> Jerry, I predict that you're going to make some man a very good, normal wife. Thank you. So far, you've successfully budgeted 125% of his income. <laughs> that means you'll get along fine. Thank that you. is, if he hocks his motorcycle. <laughs> now, let's get down to the serious business and play your bet your life. Remember, we start you off with $100. If you miss a question, you lose half your bankroll. You've selected small towns and cities of the United States. I'm going to list six cities and towns all in the same state, and you tell me in what state they are located. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. What do you want to say? Okay. How much? About 50. 50. Here are the towns and cities. Duckwater, Virginia City, Tonopah, I guess that's the way you pronounce it. Yeah. Searchlight, Mizpah, and Goldfield. You tell me the state. Do you recognize any No. Virginia City. Goldfield, Mizpah, Searchlight, Tonopah, Virginia City, and Duckwater. Mm -hmm. The only guess would be Virginia. I don't know. Well, it's, it's not a very good guess. It's, you're quite a ways. It's Nevada. Oh. <laughs> well, you still have $50. Now what are you going to go for? 60? Yeah, 60. 60. I hope you get it. Here are the towns and cities. Barnstable, Lowell, Peabody, Ipswich, Tainas Falls, and Chicopee. You tell me the state. Barnstable, Lowell, Peabody, Ipswich, Tanner Falls, and Chicopee. None of them sound familiar. Where did you go on your motorcycle? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you ever leave Sacramento? <laughs> Take a guess. You guess. Oh, uh, Minnesota? No, it's Massachusetts. Oh. oh. Now, you're rapidly getting down to nothing. Now you have how much? Twenty-five. $25. Now what do you want to go for? Maybe we're taking an easy one. <laughs> easy one? Forty? Here are the towns and cities. Globe, Prescott, Bisbee, Flagstaff, Safford, and Clifton. What is the state? Arizona. Arizona is right. Don't go any further. You now have $65. Thank you. <laughs> now what? Now what? Seventy? Thirty? Hundred? Ten? <laughs> Seventy. Seventy. Here are the towns and cities. You tell me what state they're in. Fort Myers, Live Oak, Green Cove Springs, Fort Lauderdale, DeLand, and St. Augustine. Oh, Florida. That's right, Florida. That's right. It's Florida. Thank you. And you wind up with $135. Thank you. Today, mothers are happier, are younger. They give just a little more special care to their families and enjoy thinking of special ways to please them. That's why they use the in ingredient for modern cooking, pet evaporated milk, with more than double the cream of ordinary milk. Pet milk is in for that delicious casserole, in for a whole new flavor in smothered chicken. Pet milk is in with delicious desserts that give these little benefits. So rich, so modern, with more than double the cream of ordinary milk. Pet milk is in with today's cooking. Icy Mae Hoffman and Louis Glazer are waiting to talk to you. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Icy Mae Hoffman. Icy sounds like a pretty slippery character. What kind of a dish, what kind of a name is Icy? Huh? <laughs> uh, I was born on a cold day in February, and, of course, I, I had a real character for grandfather, and he called me Icy. 
Oh, well, that's a cute name. I had a sister-in-law we called Icy, too. Yeah. No, it could have been worse. You could have been born a couple of days later when it turned warm. Well, of course, my name is May, you yes, know. Yes, and in that, in that case, your name would have been Slushy. <laughs> Where are you from, Slush? Uh, ice? Hot um, Springs? Uh, well, I was born in Clarksburg, West Virginia. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Nice I'm town. A, below it? the Mason Dixon. Yeah. How long did uh, go to this event occur, and where was it? What town? Clarksburg, West Virginia. Clarksburg? February, 1898, Groucho. 1898? Yes. Let's see this. Oh, I'm 57. I'll be 58 in February. 57, huh? Something wrong with your speedometer. You don't look a day over 35. Oh, I'm glad of that. How do you count for this youthful appearance? Well, uh, uh Groucho, you know, uh, I'll tell you, Groucho, what you can do. You, you know, you can put a nice, fresh paint job on a car, but yeah. you know what gives it away? the lines. So I'm trying to hold that line. You may be yesterday's model, a model car, but no one would ever know it. Well, when you walked you. out here, uh -huh. I said to myself, like my... now there's a late model with a brand new push button transmission. Oh, my God. <laughs> you think automatic too? Oh. Yes. <laughs> and uh, who are you again? Uh... I'm Lou Glazer. Lou Glazer, huh? Well, uh, where are you from, Louie? Well, I was born in Brooklyn, New York, but I came out here when I was five and settled in Southern California. Come out by yourself? Uh... Yeah, but my mother helped a little, too. Oh, well. What'd she do, push you along the track? No, I was a little older than that. Oh. Now, what line of business are you in, Louie? Well, uh, Gaucho, I'm uh, one of the world's largest automobile manufacturers. Automobiles? Yes. Well, goodbye, Mr. Glazer, huh? <laughs> what make of automobiles do you manufacture? And be careful what you say. Well, There's a man with a machine gun standing right behind you. Right <laughs> we make an 1893 Duryea. That's all right. And a Stutz Bearcat. That's fine. And a 29 Duesenberg, among many others. No, you lost me, Lou. The, they haven't made those, any of those cars for 20 years. What's the catch? Is your clutch slipping? Well, actually, I'm the uh, owner and president of Ravel, which is the world's largest manufacturer of plastic model kits. We oh. make... In and you just the rebel old... in these old cars? Huh? Yes, and also in the airplanes and ships we also manufacture. Yeah. Well, do you make a living just selling plastic kits to children? Yes, uh, Ravel did a volume of a little over $7 million last year. Yeah. The kids spent $7 million on plastic toys last year? That's right. Certainly surprising. Huh? Well, Louis, you've been real successful in your own business. Now, let's see how well you and Icy can do in our game. You bet your life. In the race for the $1,500, the first couple won $135. And the secret word is voice. You selected science and medicine. Uh, what do you want to start with? Do you think we think you should start with 50, 60, or 70? 60? Okay, 60 dollars. Mm -hmm. What is the freezing temperature of water on a Fahrenheit scale? 32 degrees. 32 degrees? 32 degrees. 32 degrees is right. And you now have 160 dollars. Well, now what are you going to go for? 70, 80, 90, 10? 70. 70. Anatomically speaking, what is a digit? A digit? It's like one. <laughs> That's one all right. A finger or a yeah. toe. <laughs> uh, we'll accept that. <laughs> you now have $230. All right. What for this time? How now, Violet? 80. 80. That's Shakespeare. What's the household name for sodium bicarbonate? Yeah, baking soda. Baking soda. We now have three hundred ten dollars. Now what? One hundred? Forty? Ninety. Ninety. All right, for ninety dollars, the cerebellum. I used to know a girl named cerebellum. <laughs> the cerebellum is found in what part of the human body? Yeah, the brain. The brain, the brain that's, that's is correct. The brain, yeah. <laughs> and you wind up with $400. Oh, Let's... thank you. Pet. Cook inspired with Pet. Creamy frozen fruit dessert. Easy with Pet evaporated milk. One package frozen fruit. 
two-thirds cup of pep. Whip at low speed. Now, one-third cup powdered sugar. Increase to high speed. Pet whips thick and smooth. Freeze to ice cream richness. Inspired. Inspired. Cook inspired with the milk with twice the country cream. Pet. And nothing is better for baby's formula. Pet. All the whole milk nourishment he needs. Extra vitamin D. Pure. So digestible. The best milk to help him grow healthy. Happy. Pet evaporated milk. Exactly, we have a salesman for you now, Mr. Sam Whitman. His partner is a special guest, Ms. Fifi Dorsey. So, mm. both you grin, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome. Fifi, it's nice to see you. Well, I'm certainly very happy to see you, my chicky poop. My, what am I, your what? You're my chicky poo, I call it. Chicky poo, huh? Yeah. That's an endearing term, you know. Well, I should hope so, huh? You're my favorite French actress, Fifi. I'll Maybe. never forget that picture you made with Will Rogers. What was it, Paris? <laughs> Paris in the spring? Oh, no, no, it was called uh, They Had to See Paris. Oh, it was a wonderful picture, huh? You got the greatest French accent I've ever heard, Fifi. What part of Paris were you born in, Fifi? <laughs> oh, Lala. I'm very happy you, you were born in Lala? No, 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 no. no. I have never uh, seen Paris. You've never been to Paris? No. I knew all along that was a Swedish accent. <laughs> <laughs> well, where are you from, Fief? I'll just call you Fief, huh? Oh, okay. We get Fief. familiar very quickly around here. Well, are you from Piccadilly? Oh, no. Oh. Did no. you have a Piccadilly when you were over in France? Uh, well, I was never in France and oh. I never Piccadilly. Oh. <laughs> I come from Montreal, Canada. Oh, you I remember that old song, I'm a Dreamer, Montreal. You remember that song? <laughs> are, you, are you married, Fief? Well, not at the present time. No. I'm in circulation. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, are you interested in uh, matrimony? Well, I certainly am, Groucho. Uh -huh. I certainly am. What kind of a man would you be interested in? Uh? Well, I would like to have a man that has the uh, combination, I mean, the uh, combination of uh, American and French qualities. You mean French charm and American cash? Is it? Oh, oh, well, that's an idea. Yeah, <laughs> good combination. Yeah, very good combination. Oh. Well, Fifi, you, uh, you practice your French accent while I talk to your partner over here. This, your name is Sam Whitman? That's right. I've been standing here so long, I almost forgot whether I had a voice or not. <laughs> Now you said the secret word, voice. You see it, Fifi? Oh. So you get $50, and Sam over here gets uh, $50. See, it, oh. sometimes it pays to shut up. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> in what part of Paris are you born in, Sam? <laughs> huh? Well, unfortunately, I never got that far, but I was born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Oh. And I live in Long Beach, California now. Okay. What's your racket, Sam? Well, it's not exactly a racket. I think it's an honest what job. What is your profession? It's a trade. A trade. Huh? I'm a salesman for Sears Roebuck in Long Beach. Oh. I sell furniture. Oh, I see. Well, what's your racket, Sam? Huh? <laughs> Are you considered a fairly good salesman? Well, I, I think I'm a top-notch salesman. Uh -huh. How many top notches have you sold this year? Huh? <laughs> Do you get a bonus if you sell a lot of notches? <laughs> and if so, we get a gun, bonus notches, notches to you, Sam. <laughs> What do you attribute your uh, success as a salesman to, Sam? Well, I, uh, I like people, and I found that uh, if you can get people to smile and laugh, I, uh, you have a better chance to sell them. And so uh, I've developed a habit of uh, joking with customers and making uh -huh. puns about their names or where they're from. And I found that uh, if I can make up a rhyme about a, a person or a, or a situation, that I can get a rise out of them quick enough again if I just say it in just regular English. So uh, I have developed another, You're a poet, huh? I'm a poet. Mm. I'm the poor man's Ogden Nash. Mm. <laughs> well, when did you discover this uh, talent for making up rhymes, Sam? Well... Is this a recent uh, acquisition? I think it, it happened about three or four years ago. I had a, uh, 
a, a customer came in the store, a lady and her daughter, mm -hmm. and uh, Pretty daughter? They, she was a cute little chick, something mm -hmm. like uh, Fifi here, mm -hmm. only she was from North Dakota, mm -hmm. I found out, and uh, I found out that her name was Rhoda, so on the back of my card, I made up a little verse, and uh, it may not be exactly word for word, but it was something like this. I just met a girl from North Dakota, and I found out that her name was Rhoda. She's flouncy and bouncy, she's friendly and flouncy, and she effervesces like an ice cream soda. <laughs> So I've continued you, you doing say, that. You, you say you have a flair for poetry, Sam. <laughs> you say you made up this poem when she came in to see us in Roebuck? Yes, I did. Well, how long have you been now with Montgomery Ward? <laughs> well, I've been with Sears Roebuck 15 years now, so they have, I've, I've given a lot of time to find me out. Uh -huh. Well, when you dream up one of these epic poems, do you retire to your ivory tower or...? No. Can you knock them out in the midst of the coffee tables and bric-a-brac? That's right. I can do it right on the spot. Mm. There's no place to hide at all. No place to hide. <laughs> well, Sam, you seem like a real nice guy, and I've enjoyed talking to you and Fifi. Now let's see if you can win some money. In the race for the $1,500, the second couple is leading with $400. Now this is an old-fashioned spelling bee. You get only one chance at the correct spelling and only one answer between you. I want you to spell the word and then pronounce it. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, you can start with 10 all the way to 100. Well, uh, Fifi said she used to be a stenographer for a lawyer, and I'm pretty good at words, so I think we ought to do pretty well. We'll start with $100. $100? Well, spell the word renaissance, meaning rebirth or renewal. Renaissance. Well, she says it's a French word, she ought to know. It's R-E-N-A-I-S-S-A-N-C-E. -E. That is absolutely correct. <laughs> well, you're off to a great start to have $200. Oh. Vive la France! Oh, la la, you said it, big boy. <laughs> as, I said, as I said that, there was another cabinet change in Paris. <laughs> now what? Ninety. Ninety dollars. Yeah. Is that all right with you? Yeah, it was in. He was the ball there. Okay. Well, spell the word surveillance, meaning close observation, constant watch. <laughs> surveillance. That's what I yeah. said. S S U R V E I A L A N C E. Surveillance. V no, that's not what I told you. <laughs> you spell it. Okay. S U R. V E I double L A N C E. Vive la France! <laughs> well, you now have $290. <laughs> Sam, you can kiss your wife goodbye. She's got you nailed to the. <laughs> to the alphabet. <laughs> 80. 80, eh? You two are going nuts here, all right. He is. I'm following him. <laughs> we had the solid dream, so I'm not super All right, sad. spell the word dissimilar, meaning not similar, unlike, dissimilar. D-I-S-S-I-M-I-L-A-R. Go no further. You are right. <laughs> you now have $370. I presume now you're going for 70? Your presumption is right. <laughs> And I have plenty of that, Sam. I know you do. <laughs> All right, for $70, spell the word irrefutable, meaning unquestionable, incapable of error or falsehood. I-R-R-E-F-U-T-A-B-L-E. -R -R -E -E. Go no further. Viva la France. Give him a big hit. And Give him a big hit. Wind up with $440. Oh, brother. There goes Sears Roebuck, Montgomery Ward, everything. Huh? Email Thank you. Thank you, people. That means that in just a moment, Fifi Dorsey and Sam Whitman will get the chance at the $1,500 question. All right, George, bring out Sam Whitman and Fifi Dorsey and see if they can win $1,500. Are you ready? Well, here's the question. One of the best-known horses in literature was a sorry-looking nag named Rosinante. For $1,500, who is the equally ridiculous-looking owner of this equine bag of bones? 
Talk it over. I haven't got the slightest thing. Oh, no, yeah, well, it's it's Don Quixote. When I was a lad, I used to call her Don Quix Quaxby. You know? <laughs> so that means the big question next week will be what two thousand dollars? Well, they lost the big money. How much they win the quiz? All the way, uh, four hundred forty dollars. And the, the secret word? Yes, the bird came down too. Well, congratulations Thank and you. thanks to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Remember, your DeSoto dealer sells two great cars. The outstanding 170 horsepower DeSoto Fire Dome V8 and the beautiful 54 Plymouth, America's best buy low price car. DeSoto, Plymouth, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. Friends, go in to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you. Be sure to tune in next week, same time, same station, for Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life. Brought to you by your DeSoto Plymouth Deep. And don't forget to listen to You Bet Your Life every Wednesday night on radio.